What's going on people? Welcome back to another match preview for you guys today. In this video, we're going to be talking about Chelsea versus Crystal Palace. We're going to be talking about a preview, lineup predictions, team news, injuries, all of that. We're going to go through all the information that you guys need to know for Chelsea versus Crystal Palace. We're also going to go through a little bit of transfer news just to wrap up the end of the video as well. But the main main part of this video is going to be previewing the Chelsea versus Crystal Palace game. Now before I start this video, if you guys haven't done so already, please smash that like button. Press the subscribe button as well and hit the bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever we release any new content on this channel. And yeah, let's go straight into the Chelsea versus Palace preview because I'm not going to lie, I've spent so many takes trying to get this video done. I might just give up if this one doesn't work. But yeah, it's Chelsea versus Crystal Palace and Chelsea are looking to put the last week week or two of fixtures behind them as we face a Crystal Palace side who have quietly been having a good season and have the potential to put a lot more pressure on Frank Lampard as well. Now Chelsea are looking to get their first win in three games on Saturday and after a frustrating last three games there is a bit more increasing pressure under Frank Lampard to try and get results to try and build a winning run underneath the side. And he has been put under increasing pressure. Rival fans have been on our arse over the last three games. I'm sure you guys would have known. I mean, especially with that BS Spurs result on penalties. I wouldn't be surprised if you lot been hearing it from rival fans as well. But the last three weeks have been a bit of a slap back to reality for us. We've had an amazing summer. Amazing signings. It's possibly been one of the best transfer windows that we've had on record under Roman Abramovich. But the last couple weeks of results have been a a bit of a fall off a cliff if we're being honest our early whispers of being potential title challengers were given a slap in the face by liverpool before a huge amount of defensive errors left us 3-0 down at west brom at half time before we scraped it and managed to come back with a draw because of an amazing revival by the chelsea youth before as we guys know we got knocked out of the league cup by them lot up in north london i don't even know if i can be bothered to give them a name but yeah we got knocked out of the cup by spurs in the third round which is low-key embarrassing especially in the grand scheme of things with them having four fixtures in a week and this fixture being probably the one they cared about the least they were still able to drag it through to penalties but perspective is needed and frank lampard has called on pers perspective as well and he said the team is improving well together. They just need to keep gelling together. And he does really want to see the team start to build a winning run ASAP. And perspective is needed, especially when you look through those last three games. The Liverpool game, for example. Yes, it was a 2-0 loss and Liverpool were the better team out of the 90 minutes. But again, perspective is needed and you need to see the circumstances around. If it wasn't for the stupid red card by Christensen or Kepa just being T-Rex arms as per usual, we probably would have came out of the game with a draw at least. As I've said it so many times, I still stick by it to this day. If we were down, if we were 11 v 11 against them, I see no reason why that game doesn't stay 0-0. Or maybe go 1-0 either way. We might have lost 1-0 to Liverpool. We might be in Liverpool 1-0. But it is what it is. It just goes round and round in circles. I'm not going to complain too much about it. Because we know the circumstances of it. I'm not even too angry about the, about the fact that we lost 2-0. It's more about the reasons why that we lost 2-0. But yeah. In perspective. Not too deep of a result. The West Brom game as well huge defensive mishaps but we already know the left back situation we already know Marcus Alonso is useless defensively and coming off the turn I'd rather see a truck turn because it will probably turn quicker than he does Thiago Silva as well just a mistake but nothing too deep and the fact that we're able to come back from 3-0 down I think is something that can be celebrated only lit only small celebrations we're not trying to celebrate it like Arsenal celebrating the 2-2 draw at our ground a few months ago but coming back from 3-0 down was still a pretty decent result, mainly because of the fact that I didn't think we'd come back last season or the season before that or the season before that either. I can keep going on, but you get what I mean. The only one that's a bit jarring is the Spurs game because that really and truly was all there for the taking. Jose weren't even trying to attack, but instead we had the other bummy left back, Emerson, decide to fall asleep on the far post and gift them a goal. And then Spurs just held that to penalties. And that penalties is just about who doesn't miss and Mason Mount missed. I'm just going to shrug my shoulders at that. Yeah, we had a couple chances that we could have put away. I do think rotation is something that you can go and try and discredit Frank Lampard for. If you want to go for that, then fair play. But... I've been looking at the injuries and everything and I kind of get why Mason Mount's been forced out in so many games. I do think he'll get rested for the Crystal Palace match, 
but I see why we've tried to persist with Mason Mount on the wings. We've been without Hakim Ziyech for time. We've been around without Pulisic for time. So we need someone who's actually going to start the press from the attacks as well. So I, I kind of get it. But like we said, perspective is needed over the last three games. So even with rival fans in our ear and everything, it isn't anything too deep. We just can't let this become too much of a regular pattern. And we're facing a Crystal Palace side that we know aren't going to be a walkover. They've had a pretty decent first couple games this season. Two wins in their first two games, including a 3-1 win away at Manchester United. I, I don't know how much strength a win away at Manchester United has now these days compared to Sir Alex's days, but it was still a pretty big win for them. Wilfred Zaha's was on his fiery best. I think he scored three in his last three games. And even with Mishi Batshuayi potentially out, well, not potentially, with Mishi Batshuayi out for this game because he can't play against his parent club, they still have the defenders to cause us problems. Andre Ayew is going to cause us problems. Wilfred Zaha will. Their new signing of Rachi Eze could. Hell, even Christian Benteke could. I mean, the only team he scored against in the last year and a bit, I think, was us. Maybe Arsenal too, if you want to go that far back. But I'm sure we're the last team he scored against. And definitely the last team he scored against last season as well. But Crystal Palace, we already know them. We already know our struggles with them. I, I already remember in the back of my head that game where we lost 2-1 and they hadn't even had a point in the league before facing us. And Crystal Palace like taking scalps from the top six. Like I've already said, we've had our struggles with, with them in the past. I remember clearly off my head Arsenal struggling against them as well. We got third place back in Sarri season because they couldn't beat them at their ground. And that was, I think, the team before them that Benteke had last scored against them before that he faced us last season. Uh, what was it? The Manchester clubs as well. They've also struggled with them. I think Crystal Palace have been undefeated in Manchester since 20... October 2017? I think so, because that was the last few games they had before they faced us and beat us 2-1 in that match I was on about. And they've had a good season. They look tactically smarter under Roy Hodgson, and it isn't going to be easy. I think we have to get this win. I don't even think I know that one for a mile. But we can't afford to have another loss to Crystal Palace. It's just going to heap more pressure on Frank Lampard. Especially with the international break coming up straight after this match as well. You do not want to go into the international break without a win in your last four games. It is literally the last thing that you want to do. We'll go straight into the team news quickly. Um, Hakim Ziyech is still injured. But Christian Pulisic is going to be back on the bench. Hopefully see him play because he has loved his, his, his last few games against Crystal Palace. Two goals in his last two games. Hopefully he comes on and makes it 3-on-3 three three as well. Lampard said he isn't fit to start, but he's probably going to come off the bench with the hope that we're, we'll be able to see him more regularly after, after the international break. Billy Gilmore, there's also good news on him. He isn't back, but he will be back in a month, which is a month shorter than we thought it was going to be. We thought it was going to be out for Christmas, so I'm happy to hear that. Crystal Palace... They've got hella injuries, which is also half the reason why it's so surprising they've done so well to start the season, because they've got a lot of players out. Gary Cahill is out. I don't know if it's because of that injury that he got in the last game against us last season, but he's still out. Van Arnholt is out. James Tongpins is also out, and so is Connor Wickham. Jeffrey Shrupp is a doubt, and Mishi Batshuayi is banned because he can't play against his parent club. Crystal Palace have a lot of injuries, but I'm not going to use that as a way to discredit them because they're still above us in the Premier League. They've still won two out of their first two games, which is more than we've won in the league so far this season. And like we already said, they like to get scalps. I'm going to go through the predicted lineup quickly for end this video. In goal, we're going to start with Mendy. Had a great performance against Spurs, caught the ball a good couple times, definitely more than I've seen in the last four months at least. Um... Couple good saves. I would have liked to see him do better with the penalty, with the penalties. But as a shot stopper, I thought he was good, and he definitely looks better than what we originally had. So Mendy has to start. Right back, we're gonna go with Reese James. Reese James. He didn't play against Spurs. So yeah, he's definitely gonna play in that case then. So yeah, Reese James starts at right back. I'm going to go with Andreas Christensen to partner Thiago Silva because he didn't play in the Spurs match, whereas Tomori and Zuma did. I wouldn't be against either of those two starting, but I think with Lampard and all the increasing pressure on him not playing the same defensive lineup every game, you know the stat about 41 games with 21, 22 different defensive lineups, I think he's going to try and stick with something that he, that he thinks can be consistent. So... With him starting Christensen in the last league match, I'm going to go with him to do it again in this match as well. And like I already said, Thiago Silva's going to partner him next to him. That's already a shoe in that has to happen. 
Ben Chilwell comes in on the left hand side because I I'm, I really can't be bothered to see anybody else play at left back. Emerson practically threw the Spurs game away. Marcus Alonso nearly threw the West Brom away. Don't play any of them. I beg you, Lampard. I don't even think you watch my videos. But if you do, please don't play them. Ben Chilwell at, at left back, please. In midfield, I'm going to go for Kante and Jorginho because... I think we need someone that's going to sit deep. I think, like I already said, Kante likes to roam too far forward. Kovic likes to roam too far forward as well. And like we saw in the last game against Crystal Palace, don't give them space in the middle because they will lick a long shot. Even if it is in Kepper in goal, I don't want it. I don't want that space in the middle. And I think Jorginho will sit there at the base of that midfield and keep it tight. Kante will come in as well to roam around the middle and break up play. And I want Havertz in midfield as well because I've just had enough of having him come off the right. He hasn't had bad performances there, but play him as optimum position, please. We're already going to have to force Timo Werner out onto the wings, so please, let's not force Havertz out there as well. I'd like to see Havertz coming off the middle. And like I already said, Timo Werner I want to see coming off the left-hand side. Hakim Ziyech is still out. Pulisic is going to come in off the bench. Maybe move Werner into the middle to end the match, but... It's either Werner starts in the wing for me or Mason Mount does. And I've got nothing against Mason Mount before people say anything. I think he just needs a rest. He's been played way too much. He needs a game off. And it's going to have to be this game in my opinion. So I'm going to go with Timo Werner to play on the left. I want hudson Adoy on the right as well. Hopefully he has a better performance. He needs to keep his head up as well. Because if you look at the Spurs game, there was a huge chance to lay it off to Tammy that he didn't put away either. So I hope he so I hope he has a much more promising performance as well. And we're going to go for Tammy Abraham in the middle as well. Just because I want to see the link up between the two work out. Score predictions. I'm going to be optimistic and go for 2-0 Chelsea. But guys, let me know your score predictions down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care. Up the Chelsea.